Hey everyone, Chaos Tuned here. Um, today we'd like to talk a little bit about a question that we've received uh, from a couple of our customers recently. That question uh, relates to uh, wanting to know how the OEM rear trailing arm geometry compares to our aftermarket rear trailing arms. Now, uh, we've been doing a bit of work to characterize the factory geometry and put that in a format that we can show you uh, on the screen here. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit about that and then also uh, later on in the discussion we'll talk a little bit about how camber and toe changes uh, <clears throat> in both situations. So first off here on the screen we see a, a scan. A uh, car came in, uh, we took the wheel off, set the scanner up and scanned this entire area. So this is all to scale. Um, we picked up all of the uh, important parts um, and basically what that allows us to do is um, put some reference geometry in here that represent the uh, pickup points and centers of rotation. <clears throat> uh, you can see here the lower control arm, we have centers of rotation for those three points there. We have the toe link up there, centers for that. And we also have the center for this uh, point of rotation here. So what we do with this is we then export it to SolidWorks and uh, recreate the geometry. Now this isn't a beauty contest, we just want to do a kinematic study. So um, all this is is bars, but the mates that relate this geometry are accurate. So what that allows us to do is, um, you can see here I have a little block put in here, and uh, all this does is creates a uh, reference body that I can then measure camber and toe. And I do that as a function of suspension travel. So you can see here um, we have this travel. Now this first line here <clears throat> is a reference point that I put in there that represents the uh, position of the suspension geometry when there's no weight on the wheels. So this is like the car is up on the rack and the wheels are just hanging there. Now this second line you see here <clears throat> that represents when the car is on the ground sitting statically. So both of those two points are measured and then uh, it's reasonable to assume that from this point up until your strut bottoms out <clears throat> that is the uh, area of travel that you're most interested in. Now I don't have a spring modeled in here and there's no bump stop obviously um, but for the sake of comparison I will be taking this geometry from the position you see here which is no weight on the wheels so this is um, just flying through the air all the way to the strut bottoming out and I'll speak a little bit more more about that uh, choice of travel here later on in the discussion <clears throat> now another thing here is along with this piece we have also put our RTA in here now it is mated to all of the same pickup points to the frame and the mates are uh, accurate uh, to real world so um, just edit that here you can see when we grab it and move it it also moves as it would if it were to be installed in the car now <clears throat> with these two assemblies I have then measured camber and toe every half inch of suspension travel and those results are here so you can see we have four curves there is OEM toe in blue here and we have OEM camber in orange with the triangles we have KS toe in white so that's for our rear trailing arms and we have KS camber in yellow now, before we get to looking at those too much, I want to draw your attention to these vertical bars here. This one on the left is green, the one on the right is red. <clears throat> this green bar, if you look at the x-axis here, 
that position represents uh, for this particular car um, just sitting statically on the ground. So I have collected data points uh, before that. Um, so my zero over here, that's with the car up on the rack and the wheels are just hanging there in the air. Um, this would be you flying through the air after you go off a jump. You probably don't want to be there. But uh, the, <laughs> the case that we're interested in is, is from this green bar to the right. Now the red bar, like I said before, um, I don't have a spring in there and there's no bump stop. So realistically, this operating suspension travel range, this red bar would be to the left, probably by a good inch and a half. <laughs> okay, so the area that we want to focus in on is, uh, is right here. Now you can see OEM camber. Um, and again, it's important for me to note uh, to you, in this assembly, I uh, mocked up the rear trailing arms uh, such that the alignment was the same as the OEM alignment. So uh, camber and tow with weight on the wheels, the car's just sitting there statically, is the same right now with this assembly, the one that I took the data points off of. So we're comparing apples to apples here. <clears throat> now you can see as a function of uh, suspension travel so as we move to the right here the wheel is being pushed up into the wheel well you can see how much camber changes in the in the OEM condition so again the axis here on the left is angle in degrees uh, mind that the zero point is here and um, when we look at the OEM camber as compared to uh, the camber uh, reaction that we get out of our rear trailing arms, you can see that it's very uh, mellow. And again, we're not talking about a lot of degrees here, but in a drag uh, application, um, this uh, camber curve as a function of suspension travel is desirable, so that as the uh, uh, you know as the car squats, the camber doesn't change um, significantly. Significantly. Now, most of the cars that are running these RTAs, um, you know, for a, for a front-wheel drive drag car that's set up, you know, those guys, they try to put all the weight on the front wheels. So there's really not a lot of weight on the back wheels anyway. Um, so when the car launches, uh, there's not a lot of squatting that happens. But just in case you wanted to know uh, how camber changes as a function of travel, there it is. You can see the tow between OEM and and uh, our RTAs really there's uh, not much of a difference there. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that's about all that can be said, I guess. Um, I might be uh, taking the model and uh, taking a look at what happens to these camber. Uh, and tow curves as the wheelbase of the car is extended. I looked at it for just a brief uh, little bit and it didn't appear to that it that it was going to be anything significant but I'll be spending a little bit of time looking at that further. Um, but until then, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you got any questions you can uh, call or email or uh, post a comment on this video and uh, we'll be watching that. And uh, thanks, until next time.